To another episode of Magic the Colouring, a thing I haven't done for over a year. Uh, the show where I talk to other members of the community about their passions, about pop culture figures, and we try to apply some uh, some colour pie philosophy to them. And then you can tell us how wrong we are in the comments. Today I've got two uh, veterans of magic and uh, today's topic, which is Doctor Who, by the way. Uh, one that was um, asked for quite a bit. Today we have uh, Gavin Verhey of Wizards of the Coast. Hello Gavin, who are you? What do you do normally? Well, hey, my name is Gavin Verhey. I'm a senior game designer on Magic the Gathering. So I make this little deck master game, uh, make some of the cards for it. And I mostly focus these days on the commander format. So I'm working on a lot of our upcoming commander products, of which there's many and many exciting things going on. So that's the thing I do. And then, of course, one of my favorite shows is Doctor Who. I'm a big fan of the, uh, of the um, franchise, and I'm excited to talk about it with you all today. Do you often style yourself uh, visually upon the Doctor? Um, more often than is probably healthy, yes. Um, you know, <laughs> I think both, uh, I think I'm a professor in that regard. I'm a big fan of wearing colorful suits, and I think I probably got that from watching too many episodes of Doctor Who. Today I am, of course, wearing the 10th Doctor's outfit. It's only fitting. I've got, you know, I've got all the things you need as a Doctor. I've got my sonic screwdriver right here. Very important. You gotta have that around. And then, you know, in case we get into any trouble later on, people, people don't know who I am. I've got, of course, my psychic paper. You need that in case of emergencies. So I'm ready to go. I've got everything you need for a recording. You know, I spent spent a long time getting ready today. I'm good. Let's do this. You should, for the psychic paper, Gavin, just take one of those those blank uh, 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 proxy cards from the champion decks where it's just uh, an actual magic card, but it doesn't have art or text, and slide that in there. And then you can just say you have whichever magic card you like. Right, yeah, totally, totally. Just be like, oh, hello, here is my Black Lotus. I'm good to go, right? Right. A mental magic uh, psychic paper. I've never even, I don't even know what that prop is. As some heads up for people at home, I am the scrub. I am the noob. I am the British person who doesn't even like Doctor Who. So I've invited two Americans on to school me and teach me. Speaking of amateur cosplay and dressing up like the Doctor far too much to be healthy, our other guest today is the Professor. Hello, Brian. Who are you and what are you doing in case I don't know who you are? I'm, I'm a wannabe Doctor Who cosplayer, I suppose. I, I definitely have styled a lot of my uh, dress on uh, loosely on kind of the vibe the Doctor goes for uh, throughout uh, their many in, incarnations. Um, and I have a YouTube channel about Magic the Gathering where I do th videos on all things Magic the Gathering and have had both of these fine people on various episodes you have a youtube channel i'm not even gonna get into that anyway yeah, let's no, no. let's get down to business yeah i mean so, even i have a youtube channel these days professor so oh, that that's, is that's who doesn't have a you who doesn't have a youtube channel these days we should definitely promote that gavin as well link to the description below for both of these fine gentlemen's youtube channels let's get down to business let's get on a brass tax okay he's green isn't he the the, the, the doctor's green because he regenerates or they regenerate that's case closed right case closed no, well, no. Uh, <laughs> well, regeneration's in lots of colors, Vince. Oh, this is... See, I'm, I'm already showing my uh, fake Gamer Boy credentials. I'm hoping you two disagree on what, when we get down to it. What, what, if you guys come up with the same colors, it's going to be very, very silly. Right, so do either of you have an opening argument if we were to frame this like a debate? I know I didn't position it like a debate, but I'm hoping it'll turn into one. Do either of you have an, like, an opening argument about how you see the Doctor within Magic's color pie? Yes. Okay, then let's throw yeah. over to let's start with let's start with let's start with Gavin because I like to make Brian wait to speak because he <laughs> struggles he struggles with that idea. So Gavin, what what is your opening statement about the the color pie of the Doctor? Well, my opening statement about the color pie of the Doctor is actually in true Gavin and Doctor form a little meta in which I would argue that different incarnations of the Doctor are different colors. Right, we've got Ooh. a lot of different incarnations of the Doctor at this oh, point, no. and at, and at different points in their life. I would say they're likely different colors. For example, the tenth Doctor just coming off, you know, uh, or excuse me, the ninth Doctor just coming off a huge war, a little, little more sullen, a little more less willing to be emotional about things. Poor Christopher Eccleston. 
uh, you know, he's probably going to be maybe a little more black, a little more reserved, not willing to do things as much. No. As opposed to, like, God, Matt no. Smith's doctor, we're looking <laughs> at something a little more red, who's a little more like, yeah, let's do this. I'm zany. I'm, I'm ready to go out and and uh, do all kinds of wacky actions. Right? I think across all the different doctor incarnations over time, you have some different colors showing up. But the Doctor is not a different character. The Doctor is one character throughout all of those incarnations. And so just because you might, in your interactions with them, see uh, uh, one color uh, more prominent than another would not change the actual color identity, which I feel would be consistent across all incarnations. I mean, come on, just because one doctor's personality is to be a little more chipper or a little more grim, that doesn't suddenly take you from red to black. Like, if I wake up in the morning and I'm, like, feeling kind of uh, 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 bitter... I know that's hard to imagine for me. And then the next day I wake up and I'm in a good mood. That one's hard to imagine for me. Uh, you don't say, oh, well, today, professor, your identity is red and yesterday your identity was black. It's simply that that was what was showing of my color identity on that particular day. In the same way, we could actually interpret the doctor's different inc incarnations as just a different you know, mood or aspect of his psyche that he's in, but he is still fundamentally the same character, the same color identity. Do you, so Brian, do you hold that belief for all magic characters? So if we have a character that is shown to be, I don't know, I'm trying to think of one that's changed drastically, 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 like um, Urza is Johnny. blue. Uh, John, uh, John is a good example of gaining colors, but never lost white. Uh, Urza is only blue in Modern Horizons, but obviously five color in in unstable or whatever it was. Either way, are you saying that people can't be colors that they weren't inherently initially? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that uh, a magic card might show off an aspect of uh, that character's color identity, but that doesn't mean that that character has... It, it, well, I mean, I guess... <laughs> That's that's how magic does it, I guess. I don't I don't think the doctors. I, I guess I guess I guess. Uh, no, I mean, there, there's an interesting point you made here. I, I, mean, I, I find that I find the idea that like I mean I understand that idea of change and everything. I just don't feel like. I mean, I guess I I, I suppose you could see it that way. Because in Gavin's defense, and please, Gavin, jump in if I'm getting this wrong here. Right? Yes, let's defend the guy who no, makes I'm the not, game. I'm not defending. You know, like, Look, I, think, him, I think he knows what he's talking about. I'll give him some more shit in a minute. Right? But I'm just saying, on, on this in the past, we've talked about like Spider-Man and Mario and stuff. There's been arguments about all oh, different stages, different, um, you know, um, renditions of that character and so on. And I've always been like, yeah, sure. But this whole thing is for us to argue about definitive color identity. So we kind of have to throw that to the wind a little bit. Is the Doctor one of the characters where you can't really do that because of the regeneration and because of the changes? Because the change of the Doctor is inherently part of their character, right? Like, I would say with Mario, Mario is more or less the same. Like, yeah, you could be like Mario from Super Mario Sunshine <laughs> and Mario from Super Mario Brothers 3 are slightly different characters. Sure, I Mario's guess. a bad like, example. The, the, he doesn't have a lot of characters. I, I thought you were talking about Rosewater for a second. I was like, <laughs> what, we're talking about Rosewater? Oh, but it's Brian a me, Mario. Uh, no, Brian uh, doesn't know much about popular culture, it seems. But Mario, I know who Mario Spider is. Spider-Man changes, right? I know uh, who that yeah, is but, too. But, but with the Doctor, you have such clear breakpoints, and story-wise, each breakpoint for the character is a very different incarnation of that character, right? You look at Eccleston mm -hmm. to Tennant to Smith, all the way up to Capaldi to, um, you know, all the, way, all the way up the chain, all the way back to some of the early Doctors, too. You have some very, very different feeling characters. I'm not saying, I think you could argue, for example, Professor, that the Doctor is always blue. That would make a lot of sense to me, and that they pick up different colors over time. Um, uh -huh. But much like how Teferi picks up colors, Teferi can be white sometimes, Nissa's always base green and picks up other colors, how a Johnny has moved around from white to white red to white green. I think there's a lot of space for the Doctor to pick up additional colors as well. I think saying that, yeah, maybe they're, they're base blue or base white or whatever other color you believe their base is, that's within reason to me. I can agree on that. So let's examine that for a second then, the blue. The blue, why is he base blue? Because he's a doctor because of science? Is, that, is it as simple as that? Can scientists not be in other colors? I would guess that the doctor is either, if we had to pick one color to round them as their base, is either base white or base blue. Um, maybe War Doctor is not base white, but blue is always, you know, it's the color of ingenuity, the color of invention, the color of cleverness, 
which is a thing that in pretty much every incarnation of the Doctor, they prize extremely highly, is getting out of tough situations, being smart, outsmarting their opponents, and doing it not with violence, but with intelligence. The Doctor's real superpower is his heart. And I would actually say that uh, uh, Red maybe represents the Doctor more so than intellect. But I, I think the Doctor is the combination of the two. And in, in, in that way, the Doctor is, is it, right? Because the Doctor is intellect and romance. The Doctor is uh, 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 his brain, but his two hearts. And I think that, you know, it's his compassion and uh, all, all, I, I, I mean, that depends on are we doing red with, I, I forget. I, I know there was like kickback against red as compassion. Is red still compassion or is it we'll just have to be the impulsiveness? Right. Right. Red is totally emotion. Okay. Somebody was yelling at me for, for saying red was like love and passion and was saying, no, it's just impulsive. It's not that you fall in love. It's that you, you act without thinking. Brian, if we listen to everyone who shouted us on the internet, I believe the shuffler was uh, rigged on mode rigged. Uh, on arena. So let's not get into that. Um, well, right. Brian, right. you just yell <laughs> right back. I know it's new for you, but just yell right back at them. You'll, <laughs> yeah. it'll go great. Uh, the, the thing I'll say about what you're saying is red is the color of emotion, and I think red is a fine choice to pick. I think you could also um, argue some elements of green there too, right? Green also takes care of its of its um, of its own, and green is very uh, steady in its ways about making sure things happen as they must. Which is a huge oh no, thing no, doctor, that's right? the exact opposite though. The doctor doesn't take care of his own. He killed them all. I mean, he left his home. He oh. said, S uh, 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 screw off to Gallifrey. He hated the Time Lords. He thought it was stuffy aristocratic. He left them behind. Uh, he does not take care of his own in that sense or his, his community. And he is not about keeping things as they are. The status is not quo with the Doctor. The Doctor is about, no, I don't want the status quo. I don't want to preserve those those old ways. He's a radical. He's a, a punk, a rebel. So, uh, 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 just because the laws of time don't allow him to do certain things doesn't mean that he wouldn't do what he feels is right no matter what in any circumstance. Again, red mana. But yes. a question, a question on that then for the noobs in the room, the people watching this who don't know too much about Doctor Who, or just me. Yeah. Um, you're saying that he doesn't preserve the status quo. So throwing Ooh. out to other things. So there is no sacred timeline. There is no prime directive. He is just all about mucking things up is that is that is that the doctor's way is he mischievous yes he's not about mucking things up but he's he he gets he thinks he gets to he's the he's the moral judge in a lot of ways he gets to be the arbiter of what does and does not happen he's not about mucking things up but he's also not about preserving them he's about what's doing what's right and 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 a big aspect of the character never minding very stupid stints questioning his morality but a big aspect of the character is that he is supposed to have a a a really solid moral compass and that his morality uh uh is what is the the end result of that intellect and that heart in guiding him that sounds more white than blue to me if, if 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 morality is his center, and also to the point that you could argue, I would say, if he's going all throughout time, right, and he's just doing whatever, right. not whatever he wants, but whatever he thinks is right, that sounds almost villainous and on a white level of like, his moral compass is important, his morality is important. That sounds more white than blue, especially when he's into a bit of community where he likes to kidnap people and take them through time and space with him. He doesn't kidnap people. Okay, he has a couple times, but... <laughs> <laughs> Details, that details, definitely, you know? that definitely seems details. more white than blue, right? Because he, right. he cares all about this love and heart. Like he, he, Teferi's protection seems more like a spell of his than Cyclonic Rift. If we were to like look at Commander State, yeah, I actually think Teferi is the closest character in all of uh, 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 magic lore. That uh, I think Teferi is the Doctor Who of Magic: The Gathering. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, in 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 those ways, and in a lot of ways, Teferi's protection and and uh, Teferi and him trying to save uh, uh, this one world and ended up kind of messing up and losing it through time is very reminiscent of something that can sometimes happen to the Doctor. Yeah, it's shocking to me, Professor, that you would choose Magic's one time traveler and say that's the one closest to the Doctor. Strange coincidence, is, is it not? Uh, okay, Teferi uh, doesn't actually travel in time, Gavin, because he's not made of silver. I don't know if you know this. Teferi is a time wizard who can manipulate time, but Teferi doesn't actually travel through time. We all travel in time, Brian, just in one direction. One second per second, baby. Yeah, I, I, I don't well, mean to, like, I hope you don't get demoted over that blunder there, Verhi, but uh, Teferi is not a time traveler, because in magic you have to be made of silver. 
was, the great thing, Professor, is I'll just write time travel into a future storyline, and then you'll just be wrong. So, uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, but, right. but no, yeah, time magic <laughs> is what I meant, of course. Time magic. Right, right, but, right. Oh, show. That's what you meant. If, we, if we're going into colors, what I would say is that if we if we have to pick a definitive color identity for the, for the Doctor to me, I would yeah. say it is white, blue, and maybe red. I do agree with what yes. you're saying. If you look across all identities. But uh, I, do I think blue completely. definitely. White is the heart of the character. It's always trying to do good. And then you could argue red. Maybe red, maybe not red. I'm not sold on it. But it depends. To me, that's a big incarnation question. Like Smith versus Eccleston is just like, I don't know if there's as much red in Eccleston's character. But maybe. There maybe, is. Maybe he was red. all heart. He was, he, was, he was all heart. Eccleston was all passion. He was consumed by it. Just because he was, 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 was uh, I mean, you're, you're just reading so much into it. Think about why he was the way he was. Eccleston was all passion. Was he the war crime one? Was he the one who was embittered by... There was by no things? war crime. I thought Eccleston's arc was that he had a dark past. I guess all he, dogs well, have he was past. eaten by his past. He was eaten by it. That's not black. Black isn't like like black isn't burdened with guilt. Liliana, you know, is not up until recently burdened with guilt, and I would also argue recently not really that burdened with guilt. I guess so. I guess war crimes could also fit into white's part of the color pie as well. So I guess that doesn't change the color identity there. I think I think the doctor would be blue, red, white, but have the ability to use all five colors somewhere in in his mechanics very similar i i actually think so uh if we were just trying to skin a magic card take an existing magic card and then put the doctor on it and say this then functions the closest so not designing anything new i would say joda archmage eternal comes really close to being the doctor because joda is blue red white but by using a little of everything you can do anything which is very doctor who that what, is literally that? the part I was going to say, Professor. So the fact that oh, out of, you know, yeah. 20 no, plus you're thousand green. magic no. cards, we chose, chose the same one. It's pretty telling, I think. I think so. All right. Isn't this a point, though? Isn't it? Well, maybe we take a character with some depth and a lot of story, like, you know, I don't know how many seasons of Doctor Who, 13 seasons or something now. Isn't that then when fans sit down like, oh, I guess they're all things to all people and they're incredibly complicated. They can be all colors. Isn't that a point where you have to be like, no, some of these colors don't fit. Like, for example, if you were not, not designing the card today, but if you were to sit down and make a Doctor Who card, you wouldn't just be like, oh, he's five color. And then Superman's five color. And Batman's five color. Like, that'd be a very boring game, right? Most of the characters in Magic could probably be five color. And Nissa could be five color if she just, I don't know, wore a watch and drove a car. I don't know. It feels very cop-out to say just five color, even if you are saying he's based in three. And also, Joda can, like, do anything. Can the Doctor do anything That's outside the of... Oh, the Deus Ex Mechanica. Right, you're saying that Deus Ex Mechanica is five color, and that's why the, that's why the Doctor's five color? I mean, the Doctor has been accused of Deus Ex uh, uh, Machina many, many times, especially just with the sonic screwdriver. So, I mean, you're kind so of it, making our point for so us. So, is Vince. he three color, and then the combination of the TARDIS and the sonic screwdriver allow him to be five color? They allow him to do literally anything? No, he has it within himself. He has it within himself. His color isn't... He's not... I don't think black or green, but he knows how to, he can use and operate and understand those. That sounds fundamentally human though, more so than just the doctor. Like surely we can, we all know how to use them. It's whether we touch into that stuff and, you know, make it part of our core identity, which I don't, I mean, again, I've seen like three episodes of the show and I hated it. So I'm, I'm just throwing you out You liked the one I forced you to watch. I forced <sighs> you to watch it. You said it was good. Which one was it? I, I forced him to watch. So he was over and I forced him to watch the girl in the fireplace. Oh, I said an amazing episode. Conceptually, yes. yes. But presentation-wise, the show is always incredibly um, off-putting. And I'm not going to say cringe, but it's cringe. Can I just say that I think it's uh, fantastic that you don't know anything about Doctor Who. You're from London. You brought in two Americans to talk to you about the show. And I'm then he shows London. the color identity red, white, blue. We're like, ah, oh, yeah. yes, the colors <laughs> of our flag. That is the colors we would like to uh, tell you that this British character is. Yes. I, I well... Uh, Gavin, um, I got some news for you about the colors of the British. Flag, I was about to say, aren't our colors? The did same? you did you did you see the flag? Seeing the flag defines the colors of the flag. So, sorry, I, I let me just try that one more time. Uh, and his colors are red, white, blue, which is of course the colors of the American flag, right? So no, no, don't edit, that. don't don't edit that error. Don't <laughs> no, edit no, no. that error we'll, out. We'll please, keep that please. in. We'll keep that in. So yeah. you're, t you're telling me he's red, white, and blue, and he can use any color because he's a complicated character and he can do anything. That just sounds like a cop-out. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I do kind of agree with that, Vince. I feel like if you start making cards for characters that actually exist, a good character in a well-written property, you can see all five colors in them, right? You look at yeah. an existing character in most properties, you'll see aspects of every color, unless they're like a one-dimensional hero or villain. So since the Doctor has so many incarnations and is so well-written, it is very tempting to go to the five-color well because you can see them at all five points in time. But that's not always correct to do so. And I think, although it is tempting to go down the five-color route, if I was making a new Doctor card, I'd probably stick to a smaller combination of colors. Um, but if we were, you know, I do think Joda is a good analog for whatever it's worth. I thought, I thought you were doing a really good pullback there where you then used this part of the conversation to prove your original point, that we should talk about iterations over generalized. Because obviously generalized, we're just, we're just landing on is, is three color, but kind of five. And that's the cop out where you're saying, obviously, if you look at snapshots in time, which I guess is a, that's gotta be a theme of the show, right? It's all about time travel, snapshots in time. Surely then he wouldn't be five color. Christopher Eccleston's doctor would not be black. And I want to, I want to say why. Okay. Because black is the color of parasitism, correct? Par black is the color of doing, uh, uh, using others to accomplish your own goals, power at all costs. And none of those things were, were Eccleston. Uh, Eccleston's character, and never mind the larger scope, because Eccleston's single season had this really perfect uh, a beginning, middle, and end. And we begin supposedly more or less after the time war where uh, uh, he uh, essentially killed everybody in order to save everybody. And at the end of it, it all comes down to this moment where he can destroy the Daleks, but it would kill half of the human population uh, and he d can't do it. And he doesn't do it. And he says any like that he he's the one who's going to die. And and he's like any day, a uh, 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 murderer or mouse. And he's like mouse any day. Uh, and his character isn't one that's willing to exploit others. His last act is sacrificing himself and saving Rose. Uh, 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 he's not using you know uh, uh, other people to get his own power. He's about giving up on himself uh, to try and save others. And so I, I don't believe that just because the character is is tormented by his past actions that that makes him a black character in any conceivable way. In anything, it makes him, you know, probably the greenest version of Doctor Who or green-white version of Doctor Who more so than any other. But this idea that, like, I feel like Eccleston gets a really bad rap because he played the character so passionately you know, uh, and uh, 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 in that way, and it's like he wasn't mean. He was kind. He wasn't cruel. He, and and he w and he he tried to joke and have fun. He just kind of hated himself. But like, I, I just feel that that needs to be said because Eccleston really does not get a fair rap. I I agree with that. I think Eccleston does not get a fair rap, uh, especially because only he only had one season. I right. also agree that I do not think Eccleston is black. I I agree with that. Um, I would argue maybe that the War Doctor could be black, though. I mean, that he, was my I next that question. Is, is that, is that, is that the John Hur? Is that the John Hur? Right, right. That's that's John Hur. I mean, he, yeah. yeah. I'll, I, I would say maybe mono black, maybe mono black, because that's also when he's not the Doctor. Supposedly, if you go by that lore, which I don't even know how much I accept that as canon, uh, because in a lot of ways the War Doctor was supposed to be Eccleston, and they rewrote it, and this. I don't, I don't want to get into that, but but based on what's on the screen. The War Doctor might be the only black incarnation, mono black incarnation of the Doctor, because he vowed that he would do whatever it took, uh, uh, and that that's why he didn't call himself the Doctor, and even in later incarnations wouldn't call himself the Doctor, because that was the only time where he was not there to help others. Gavin, in that you, were, sense. You, you were you were saying were you saying mono black as well for this War Doctor? I, I, well, I think you could argue white black potentially because he's like I will do things at all costs, but to protect things that I care about right is maybe something that was going on with the war doctor um i don't think there's ever been a mono black doctor but i i could imagine that the war doctor is white black or white blue black or something like that um if we're breaking down see now we did it we finally got into the individual doctor incarnation color pie my grand plan is finally here it's all, all right. materialized and i've uh you know shown that i think that this character can have a, a lot of depth and a lot of different iterations to him uh, and them uh, across all their different incarnations yeah, yeah. You know, it, it is easy then to then, I, I guess, take the cheap way out and say, oh, but then the War Doctor was also, you know, smart and building things, so wouldn't they have red and blue and stuff? And maybe if you're getting at their core, kind of like what was in his hearts uh, uh, in any one incarnation, 
perhaps that was the one incarnation where, you know, definitely he was uh, willing to, you know, do whatever it took, including use others, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, it, it's hard to say, too. It's, it's very hard to say because we don't even know quite what he did as the war doctor. So who knows? But it was pretty bad. If apparently. we were accepting them, so, so here's the next step in this. If we're accepting that there are snapshots in time, iterations of character and stuff like that, where are we at at the moment with Doctor Who? With the most re- I, know the re- I know the most recent season is not also very popular with people, and I'm assuming there's strong opinions on that. But where are we at, at the moment? Has, is the Doctor right now? Because you guys have spoken a lot about Eccleston. I don't want to go through every single Doctor, but as we've just had it. I do. Season, I do. Let's start with Hartnell, Mono Blue. All right. Right. Let's. We haven't got time to go through all of them. I don't think Agreed. The Hartnell, Mono Blue. On to the next one. Right. All right. Where are we at now compared to Eccleston, compared to the War Doctor? Where are we at now going into the next season, which is, is like being filmed right now, right? Oh, I think, I, I think yeah, Jodie's, I, like Jody... I think Jody, she's five color for sure. She's five color, you know, cause she can kind of do anything and she's got right. all those so, aspects So Brian's going with a cop out. Gavin, where, where were you out on this? <laughs> uh, to me, Jody is just your classic red, white, blue doctor, right? I think that she embodies all those elements of, of the doctor. If you want to make the argument that she has a five color identity cause she can use all five colors, great. But if you really want to drill down into it, she feels like a very standard, like red, white, blue. I am embodying the doctor's traits. I've seen some yeah, stuff. Yeah. I'm a, li- a little zany. I'm emotional. I'm good. I'm an ingenuity. That that's all there with her. I think red, white, blue. But she thing. can kind of she can tap into those other aspects. So I think that if she were a magic card, she'd be Joda. Which, by the way, Gavin, you have now just agreed that each iteration is not different. That each iteration of the Doctor is essentially red, white, blue with the five color ability, like Joda, and that it does stay the same throughout their many different incarnations. There, if Jody is Joda, and we were talking about Eccleson and Tennant, and I, th- Joda I think and all I that think stuff. that was so, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- that was us going to the most simplest, low and common, lowest common denominator, like. Reading of it, I think. If we expand, Joe is the base level, and we can expand from there. In, in my humble opinion, but but also, doesn't the Doctor always need companionship? And does companionship really come into green, white, or red? I guess white to an extent, but like, isn't he often yeah. lonely and unable to act without kidnapping people to take on his journeys with him? I mean, I mean, community, right? That, that's a very white aspect of the color pie. Yeah, so I would say that that's reflected in there. I would also say that, by the way, I don't know how deep you want to go on this, Vince, but I feel like we could have a great discussion about companion color pie because that's one where it does change around quite a bit, I think. And you get oh, yeah, that's where it gets exciting. <laughs> well, I'm not a big fan of the companion mechanic myself, but we can briefly talk about companions. So are you saying, so do you think a lot of the companions are one-dimensional? Is that what you're saying with like monocolor? Or is that more just that they no, they're each the different. Doctor? They're each different. They're each different. Isn't that like the doctor a thousand has had The Doctor has even had, Gavin, can you name the two artifact companions that the Doctor has had? I, I can name one of them. Well, K9 is the easy one. Yeah, so K-9's what's the, the hard one? one? But I do not know the other one off the top of my head. Oh, well, for that, we have to go back to one of the shortest lived companions, which was the fifth Doctor's companion, Chameleon, who was a robot that he made. Uh, and was apparently the prop and design of Chameleon was so uh, difficult that after just shooting one episode, they were like, oh my God, we cannot do this. And they didn't even bother explaining where Chameleon went and just didn't have him for several episodes. And then they did a final farewell quickie one. And it was just this, they were trying to be, they reached too far for the sun. And so, uh, but we're, of course, I want to point out, we're not counting big finish stories. My God. What's sorry? What's big finish? Yeah. What's that? It's, it's like a British audio thing. dramas. Yeah, British audio oh, dramas of the right. Doctor, which many people argue are canon. To go back to the companion thing, so I'm interested in what you said about Gavin about monocolored. You mentioned that'd be an interesting way of putting monocolored in. Is that is that because, the, like I said, do they accent the Doctor? Are they are they giving him traits that he doesn't normally have? Does he need? Ooh, them that's really to clever. Have humanity. The Doctor has oh, partner yeah, think- partners with companions. That's brilliant. The doctor has partners with. Oh, you can't listen to this, Gavin. Put your hands in your ear. Uh, nah, the, the, the doctor has partners with I companions. I don't know that I would make this argument, but I think you could argue that there is a world where some parts of Jack Harkness are black. Oh yeah, um, sure, sure, sure. I watched Torchwood. Did you like Torchwood, Vince? No, it was worse. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I, I, come from a house, I come from a household of sci-fi lovers. People who wonder I don't like this. My parents love Stargate and Star Trek and stuff. I like Star Trek and Stargate. But Doctor Who was just a line I drew. English sci-fi has got a long way to come in terms of at least presentation. Um, 
Anyway, getting back to the point. Well, yeah, I think it is important to set, to set the stage of Doctor Who. It was originally, when it was originally created, it was basically using other sound stages that were yeah. left over and other props that were left over. Yeah. And I quite, so, I know, quite like the early the Doctor Who. Do. Yeah, exactly. They look, like, yeah, like, you can spot things from Blake 7 and stuff, like, on set. Like, it's it, that that's cool. And the early Doctor Who, I can get on with the tunes. <laughs> just not modern Doctor Who. Um, yeah. You said... Yeah. So there's at least there's only one black companion, and that was the the is that the, the the captain from Torchwood? Well, Missy definitely has black in her. I mean, come on, yeah. she's the master. Okay, yeah. let's just jump, companions are boring. Let's just jump to the, my next bullet point, which is the master. Then, if the master is the reflection of the Doctor, do they share colors? He's he's obviously black because he's the bad guy, and that's just how things work, right? Right. <laughs> Right, Gavin? Uh, Isn't that basically how uh, a uh, lot magic of the storytelling in Wizards? Do- <laughs> L- Lord Kanda of Ajango and uh, Tetsuo Umazawa would like to have a word with you. Yeah, can you um, name more? Th- can you name 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 more than two? Or- Thirty years of magic. Name more than two examples of black uh, 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 magic heroes. <laughs> Liliana. Oh, Toshiro- cheap, 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 cheap. Toshiro Umazawa. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but so the, is is the master it, the master's a mirror of the doctor right he's the same thing he's a space wizard who steals people and takes them on adventures depends no he doesn't steal people although the master has had a few companions but uh, uh typically not the master uh uh it depends who's writing him i mean you can argue the master is like the doctor or, or you could argue he's a mirror or you could argue he's nothing like the doctor because you could a- argue that maybe the master is uh, 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 what the doctor is missing. I don't know, you know? I, I would say master is at their core. If I had to pick a color identity once again, Dear. I would pick black blue. Yeah. yeah exactly, black blue. But I, there's definitely red in some incarnations, which once again, you get into the incarnation discussion. But like the um, the incarnation uh, in Tenet's run, I felt like there was a lot of red, almost like a Moriarty quality yeah. to, uh, to that doctor. Where in some of the more earlier runs it's pretty staunch like blue black i am the i'm a straight up villain who's, right. who's scheming so it depends a little bit but blue black is is the core to me the truth is is that they had did say that they they literally thought that uh they needed a, a mori when they were designing the master uh they were we were coming up with they wanted a moriarty to the the doctor's sherlock in a sense they said they wanted that type of a villain who was a an intellectual uh equal and they actually chose master as a name uh because they liked that it was also a title that was granted by like a, a academic institution uh and and they liked that and the duality of that 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 it, it sounds like it's the master but it's like it's like doctor master these are titles granted in that way uh uh the master is definitely no matter what incar there's no incarnation of the master without black but I'd why blue n- like everyone's agreeing on black the master's why blue? brilliant the master's just as smart if not smarter than the doctor the master actually knows how to fly the tardis I say that the great interplay between the Doctor and the Master is they're both incredibly intellectual characters. So you have once again that wit, that creativity, the Moriartyness of hey, I'm going to defeat yeah. in a really clever way that feeds very much into Blue. And while the Doctor uses his creativity to help people, the Master uses their creativity to um, to create horrible schemes and machinations. And to me, that feels extraordinarily Blue. Okay, yeah, the the evil machinations, sure, that makes sense. I'm more, I think I'm more just voicing a, you know, we've already joked about all villains being white and all hero, uh, yeah, all villains being black, so and all heroes being white. And there's also this thing in magic where anyone who's portrayed to be smart, intellectual, or clever in some way has to be blue. And that's probably why I like some parts of Strixhaven. My Strixhaven was like, actually, you can be into like I don't know botany and not have to be blue. And I think that was a very good thing about mm-hmm. Strixhaven for expanding that mm-hmm. pie. That's why I didn't want us to settle that. Oh, he's kind of clever and he's a bit sciencey, therefore he's blue. I think that's just, again, a bit of a cop a bit of a, a basic way of looking at it. The Master is, I, I would actually argue the difference between the Master and the Doctor is they're the same, but the Master lacks the Doctor's morality. And and I, I think that when the Master is actually done right in many episodes, and it's not just portrayed as a mustache twirling villain, a lot of what the Master does or is doing could very easily be argued to be the sort of thing, like the Master is also someone who rejected Gallifrey and, and went out into the the universe of time and space to seek you know themselves and such and i think that the real difference is the master just didn't have any any uh, uh, a real morality and that a lot of what the master is doing in some situations is not just evil for the sake of evil but when written well it's like yeah it's just doing what you would do out there if you didn't really have any moral compass or center but has that great has passion i think and intellect and all of those things but just 
completely lacks the morality of the Doctor, which, when done really well in the Missy arc, is the Doctor basically trying to, you know, finally instill that sense of morality in her. Uh, uh, and so I, I, I do think that the blue is there because the Master is brilliant, is possibly the smartest Time Lord uh, next to the Doctor sort of thing, if not smarter, but lacks the Doctor's morality. Yeah, and I think that them sharing colors is really important for that because th they're kind of a foil to each other, but they do still have a lot of the same center, right? Missy is almost, and, and the Master, are do is like a mirror of the Doctor, a dark mirror of the Doctor of what they could have become, which makes it so interesting how they both just diverge at different paths and you know they both have that core blue to them and then white or black on either side. Do you, do you think that um, you said that uh, he's trying to instill Missy with a moral compass again, having not seen these episodes? Coming up to the contemporary Doctor Who, does Missy and the Master now have a moral compass? Did he succeed? Is there some white in Missy's color by now? Yeah, they did, and then 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 all of a sudden she came back and didn't. It was all like it never happened, and it was stupid. And Chris Chibnall is. Sh did you think um, when it comes to so this is interesting again? It, it works for comic book characters when having this discussion as well. Is when you move to a new writer. And they often will reset to center, or they'll just reset to default, right? Like the master is the foil, the master is the mustachioed villain that they need to to be his version of Moriarty or the Joker or whatever. Do you think then they just go back to similar to what we see with magic? We go back to the default, so the master just reverts back to even if you have given more of a morality or or given some development, they reset to black blue and stuff like that. Do you think that's a, thing, a problem with a uh, rotating writer room almost? Well, I think one of the challenges of having a show that's been around for over fifty years is that you have a lot of built-up expectations about a character, right? So imagine you don't watch the Masters arc where they, you know, start doing some good stuff, and you just come back in, and they're doing good stuff. You're like, that's weird. That's not the Master I know. So there's always this pressure, I would imagine, to make the characters behave like what you expect for them to behave like. And you can go with some, some variation outside of that, which is, you know, how the Doctor might pick or lose different colors or what have you. But if I tuned into Doctor Who and suddenly the Doctor is going around murdering people, I'd be like, this isn't the show I signed up that's for, That's a right? bit extreme. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I think that there is probably yeah. some pressure internally to revert back to the core for these characters because it's difficult over a 50 year plus show to maintain <clears throat> a lot of character changes. So would you say, Gavin, that that means that the whole different iteration snapped certain time character development arc might not be the best way to look at things because things will always revert back to a center and that center might be a particular color pairing or a particular color trio or similar. Well, and that's why I would argue that I think the Doctor has base colors, blue and probably white, but can okay. pick up other colors because that it's like the writers always snap back to that blue-white core but can dance around the other options if they want them as they, as they move. Uh, in the same way that I would argue that the Master is base blue-black but has picked up red in some incarnations and potentially even white in an incarnation depending on the writer that's writing them, but then they snap back eventually to that blue-black core. Yeah. Uh, I think that... We as viewers, this is a belief of mine as a consumer of media, do have to have a certain level of suspension of uh, uh, not quite disbelief, but like, listen, if you're doing a TV show that is not a uh, ongoing, you know, continuation where one episode leads into the next and you're doing one large story overall, but you're doing serialized television or any type of long term show and character, you you have to kind of hand wave a little bit that like the characters can only change so much. And I think that you can find the changes not so much in the core definition of who or what a character is, but in how it is represented. And that is the best little thing that Doctor Who has done because as we've had different showrunners and different writers, they have said, I have a different way that we can show who and what the Doctor is. And so while the Doctor as a character doesn't change, we, you know, Rus Russell T. Davies, how he wanted to show the Doctor is so dramatically different than, say, you know, uh, Hartnell's time or uh, 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 other showrunners in the, the, the old series, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, when John Nathan Turner took over as showrunner, John Nathan Turner had bold ideas about what he wanted to do for the Doctor. And that's very different than like, you know, back when Verity Lambert was originally, you know, uh, creating the show or that later on when Russell T. Davies reimagined it, but it's still the Doctor at it's his core. And I think that that's really the way in which he changes, not who he is as a character, but how he is shown. And that's what we saw that to his credit, Stephen Moffat did with Missy. I think that was actually the best thing of Stephen Moffat's uh, 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 run 
in terms of what he added was he he gave a really good look at the master and I don't think Missy was in any way out of character for the master and it was a real final kind of good developed representation of that character that had never really been done before. One thing that I think is pretty interesting you kind of brought up there is is when we're making magic sets to get into the game that we all love here, an analog I use sometimes is Doctor Who because you have a core show, a core character, a, a core game you're trying to make, but every game designer adds their own flair to it, like how a showrunner would, right? And when I design a set or Eric Lauer designs a set or Mark Rosewater makes a set or Dave Humphreys makes a set, whoever... We all add in things that we care about and we like into it and maybe don't focus as much on the things that we like a little less, right? We have our, our own bugbears to, to attack in a set. So I, I think that there's a lot of interesting analogs between how you create a show like Doctor Who and how you have different showrunners and how you have different game designers for a magic set. Yeah, I think that's a really cool way of looking at it. Yeah, I mean, I came into this expecting to be very much, as soon as Gavin mentioned about, like, you know, uh, changing characters, like, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I'm assuming, especially with the the regeneration of Doctor Who. But actually coming to this point where we start to focus on showrunners and changing writing staff or designers in the case of Magic, um, I think that kind of nails down the idea that actually you can't settle on that for a lot of these characters. We have this with some of the comic book ones as well. You do have to like know a core identity or, or not know. You don't have to do anything. It's a stupid exercise about colour pie philosophy. It doesn't mean anything. But like settling <laughs> on like a... Uh, like a uh, colors that you can inflex on and which writers do, right? Because you have defining character traits that, like Gavin said, if you tune into Doctor Who, you expect Doctor Who to be acting like Doctor Who, give or take yeah. whatever small amount of serialization has happened in that like character arc or whatever. And that's why I really didn't like uh, when they brought on Peter Capaldi. Uh, Moffat wanted to do exactly what uh, 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 Jonathan Nathan Turner uh, wanted to do when they brought in Colin Baker, which is they tried to change our perception of the Doctor, and it failed spectacularly. Like, one of the most unpopular Doctors is Colin Baker's uh, 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 Doctor. Um, and uh, uh, that's because Jonathan Nathan Turner uh, tried to change uh, the character into this, like, dark, questionable, maybe not your friend... Uh, sort of person and as a result of that uh, people really hated the character and then uh, it was like legendary how bad Colin Baker's doctor was uh, received and and such and then when uh, we were generated into Capaldi Moffat did the same thing and he's like oh let's make it where it's like maybe he's a bad guy after all maybe he's he doesn't have morals maybe he just uses people and and it was awful people stopped tuning in because it, it'd be like 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 hey let's do in season eight of Star Trek the next generation maybe the Federation are really bad fascists and P Captain Picard uh, it doesn't you know, like have Brian, any morality. You're, Brian, you're and describing Picard. Like, you're describing Picard. Yeah, I know. That's well, what they literally like, done with just Picard. Why I didn't like, guess why I didn't like Picard. <laughs> I'm with you. you know? It's ridiculous. <laughs> it is, and and so it's like when when Moffat then gave up on that and suddenly made Capaldi like the Doctor. In I think Capaldi's last season was was his best, and it was reportedly because both Capaldi and Moffat were done with the show, and they literally said, "Let's just." have fun with it and do it right. And and they did it amazing. And all the other stuff was them trying to chase all these gimmicks and this and what if the Doctor's evil and crap. And then when they're like, hey, why don't we just make Doctor Who? It, it worked. It's kind of like why Star Trek The Next Generation series finale, All Good Things, is better than any TNG movie. Because all the TNG movies were them trying to chase popular, uh, uh, let's get the non-Trekker you know, viewers First contact in here, let's make amazing. it popular. No, it, it, yeah, but it's, it, I, I'm so glad you like Die Hard in space, but it's not Star Trek. Oh, but and, it's such a good uh, movie though. Such a good movie. It's got time I'm, travel. Great. It's, got, it's not to love about First Contact. You get time travel. Yeah. I love, I but love But my point is, is that when they wrote, they wrote yes. all good things, they said, we're writing a love letter to the fans. And uh, it's the sort of thing that I hope that most beloved franchises recognize is that the power is in their core fandom, the people that have carried them through, let's say, 25 plus years of success, and that if you're just chasing, trying to get mainstream popularity, you're going to end up with those crappy TNG but movies. It's not, and, it's not always yeah. chasing mainstream popularity, though. Sometimes it's just wanting to tell a different story within a, within the confines of what like the property gives you, right? Like, you're saying it's oh, Die Hard sure. in Space. It was a, yeah, there are elements of Die Hard in Space. There are elements of it being a zombie movie. There's time travel stuff, which some people really hate when Star Trek does that and stuff. But 
I'm a great believer in like if you've got a property like a like a DC comic or a Marvel comic or Doctor Who or, or, or Next Generation or whatever it is, you should be allowed. You should give writers some room to tell interesting or different stories, even if they don't quite fit with what you truly believe is the core of the franchise. I'm not saying they can obviously like change characters irreparably or make them act completely out of character, but I think people need to be a bit more. Let, more loose with how what they expect from their entertainment properties not expect everything to be rigidly how it always was back in 1994 or whatever you know no that's fair I mean, I'm but sure Gavin's got, some, its Gavin's got some opinions it on that about magic to its, right? it should be true to its ideals like it's let's present it better let's do it better but let's not just try and make Star Trek this action thing. I mean, it's just like, oh, Star Trek, it needs that. It's like, no, Star Trek is supposed to be about these core ideals. And it's like, we have a better way of presenting them. But if they say, well, we're not interested in the core ideals. We're not interested in being what made us great. Let's just try and do something I, else. I, then it's not the same property anymore. Sure, but for, Did but you first like Star Trek Discovery? No, I did not. I love First Contact. I think it's great. Um, and it's interesting, Professor, because... So, uh, not to um, make you have any heart palpitations, but it came out when I was a small kid. And so, um, for me, damn, I it was exactly, high school. <laughs> first contact is what got me into Star Trek, Trek, was part of the things that got me into the show in the first place. So, sometimes doing these outreach methods that are a little different than what you would normally get into, so you can attract more people uh, to hit a wider audience, to bring them into your franchise, it works. And it, that totally worked for me, right? I saw first contact, was like, this is awesome, I want more of this got into watching uh, my dad's like oh well, come watch the original series with me we watched the original series and i loved it i, I, I totally fell in yeah. love and it was that gateway of first contact that got me in so I, sometimes <laughs> i think it's so you're saying you have you're, with, i was gonna say comment this, section this is not this is not a segue into a Fortnite plug just god damn before, it you took my bit you stole my it's, bit it's you my stole fucking my channel um yeah comment section don't worry that this was not a planned segue into that okay and we're not going to discuss that right now just because people are probably chomping in the comments carry on Gavin. <laughs> Gavin, Gavin carry floss? on Gavin. is that how this works i don't know what i do next uh, do they uh, dab in <laughs> i'll carry on Gavin. I, I, I was just saying that i mean when you look at a game that has nearly 30 years of history like magic or you look yes. at a show like doctor who which has over 50 years of history i think that the game should retain its core i think that's really important but also as things evolve you've got to be looking for ways to get new players into your game and i think or into your show too and i think you're going to try different things out some of them are not going to work to look at doctor who I would say, yeah, the Jody seasons have not been the most popular, but they did a very bold thing with their first season. They said, hey, we're going to get rid of all the stuff you know. We're going to bring in a whole new cast of companions. We're going to not use any of the villains that you're used to, and we're going to try resetting because Doctor Who has gotten too complicated. And that that's a big price to pay with the current fans, and I think that was probably a little too extreme. But it's possible a more toned-down version of that could have worked. And I think, you know, um, with magic, we see things on the other end. We saw Time Spiral, where it was leaning too far into the, let's focus on the nostalgic player and not focus on the brand new player at all. And that blew up in our face horribly. But now, of course, corrected, right? We've learned we can do things like Horizon sets, which are great for the enfranchised player, but don't necessarily blow up in the face of the, of the new player. We can do sets like Dominaria, or coming up soon, shameless plug, Dominaria United, where we go back to, uh, to old things that players really like, and show them off in a way that's cool for new players and in franchise players alike via a lenticular design process. So I think there is a, a good medium to hit here, but it's also very important you have ways to grab brand new fans of your property. Gavin, anyway. shouldn't yeah. the Brothers War set be before Dominaria United? Because then what it could do is it could show, because the Brothers War was the most destructive thing to ever really happen to Dominaria. It's what started you know, all of, of, of the stuff. And so shouldn't we have started with that huge destruction and then ended with Dominaria United, which is now, I'm guessing yeah. from the title, some final hope and optimism. It feels weird going from Dominaria United and then back to the big destruction. Why don't we start with the destruction and end with the, right? It just feels narratively no, no. out of order. Who do no. I email about this, Gavin? Absolutely. Who do I email no. about well, this? Well, Professor, uh, technically uh, we had antiquities, so we've already done that, you know, no problem. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> also, nice, try trying to get, nice try trying to get spoilers out of me, Professor. You can't trick me. Uh, uh, hey, Gavin, I don't mean to year. make I don't mean to make you feel young, but when I was in high school, Antiquities had just was the set when I started playing Magic the Gathering. Antiquities had just finished up. That, when so, you were in high uh, school, did all the cool kids like First Contact? And that's why you have this sort of like... First Contact came out at the end. Uh, of, it came out a few years later. 
what a banging movie. I think we can on all agree, note. though, that Insurrection is bad, though, right? We can, we can all yeah, agree on yeah. this. Yeah, movie's terrible. Uh, I think we can all agree that Nemesis is worse. I, yeah. I can agree with that. Yeah. I think I First think, Contact yes. is probably the only... Wait, there is only four next-gen movies, right? Yes, First and they the all only sucked. Good one. First Contact I, is the best of the four, but it still isn't Star Trek. I all imagine we can also it, all agree it definitely that, is Star Trek. We can also all agree that the best Star Trek movie is Wrath of Khan. Closely nope. followed. Best Star Trek by... movie is Star Trek One, the motion picture. I think somewhere right now that movie is still going on. Like someone started playing it back <laughs> when it started, and it's still running. Um, I would argue the best Star Trek is Wrath of Khan, followed, of course, by The Voyage Home, which is an amazing film. Love The Voyage Home, so good. And uh, The Undiscovered Country. You know the rule: even numbered original Star Trek movies don't suck. No, no, the rule was. Every even number don't suck, and then Simon Pegg joined Star Trek and had to like reca- like retract that statement because he's now well, in also odd numbered ones. The TNG TNG movies aren't part aren't Star Trek movies, but like the anyway, like Star Trek the motion picture is the most Star Trek. Movie no, that Star there Trek is. the motion picture is only good if you haven't seen Stanley Kubrick's Tell- Space Odyssey 2001. That's, that's the only reason you might think that movie is good because all it is doing is cribbing off that sheet with recognizable characters. On that note, though, because this is not about Star Trek this episode, but I think the tangents worked and I think they were very good for getting some insight into uh, Magic the Gathering as well. If you have got some thoughts on this, if you think everyone was copping out by saying that their favorite counts are five color, they don't want to, they don't want to pigeonhole them. Do you think we were too uh, mean on the master? Do you think he's got a soft underbelly of like fluffy whiteness let us know in the comment section below do you also think brian's opinions on star trek are wrong do you think gavin's opinions on star trek are wrong let us know in the comment section below and you can also comment about the Fortnite secret lair but we're not going to be talking about that i'm not going to respond to you but you can for the engagement um thank you both for coming along and getting involved this has been a lot of fun um do you have anything else you want to add before we close up do you have any closing statements before we fly off into the sun no, that's not what they're doing I, I i i do but i want gavin to go first Oh, okay. Uh, all I have to say is uh, this has been a great time, and uh, I don't want to go. Uh, oh, is that a line from Doctor Who? But context clues. But Gavin, we all change, all of us throughout our lives. That was the best. The best. Come on, Matt Smith's final speech was the best Doctor Who final speech ever. That was the best.